Hi, I hope everybody's having a good night. My name is Roz, and I'm here to tell you a story. Well, actually, not a story, my experience on finding out of Indigo. Um, it was really crazy, you know, I've been going through things back to back to back and trying to understand, you know, why was I going through all these things? So, you know, when you want to learn more about yourself and stuff like that, you go to the world's internet. And this is when I found out, wow, I was a um, indigo. You know, um, starting off as a child uh, from the beginning, make the long story short. Um, when I was a child, I always just had these weird dreams. Um, I always, you know, trying to understand and decipher why was I having these dreams. You know, I was always seeing myself in a crib, just crying all the time, crying all the time, and didn't know why. Um, and I remember this this person. I don't know if it was a male or a female. Very fair skin, big beautiful hair, and I'll always hear them crying. You know, those were the first nightmares I would always have as a child and my parents will always tell me you know how do you remember that you did you know that somebody tell that you used to cry a lot as a child um and I told them no um these are things that I just dreamed about and it got you know pro progressively got worse you know four or five years old I would have dreams um about this man and this woman and these two other people um, one was, uh, a mother figure, um, she always constantly had her face covered, and I would hear her crying, she's deep in the shadows, and never knew why, and my father, before I knew at the time, was always in my dreams, you know, I'm just like, well, we never physically met, or, um, uh, never really talked, so I'm just wondering why I would always see him in my dream, and, um, we will always play all the time. He will always tell me, you know, look, I'm only here for a little while, but um, I'll be here same time tomorrow. Let's just enjoy the time we have now. So I, we will always constantly play together, but there would be some dreams that he would be like my brother at some aspects, and then he would be like a father or a father figure to me. He always told me he loved me, coddled, cradled me, you know, like I was a little girl, you know, a little baby or whatever, always kissing me on my forehead, telling me how much he loved me. But that feeling was just so magical to me, like I never wanted to wake up. I never wanted to leave this beautiful, magical place of ours, you know. And they would get worse, you know. They were always good dreams at first, but when I was getting older and I guess trying to understand, you know, and I looked at my parents like, you know, you're my parents, but I don't look anything like you or I don't feel like I fit in with you guys. Like, you don't feel like you belong to me. And I would, my mom would always ask me, you know, what are these dreams that you're having? You know, why do you keep waking up in these cold sweats screaming all the time? you know, asking for your dad, and then when your dad comes, you're saying, no, not this dad, the other dad, and, you know, and I told her, you know, I don't know, you know, I didn't feel comfortable at the time, because I didn't understand them at first, um, so, um, I went ahead, and, um, later on, after I started having the dreams a lot, that I felt like I needed to tell her, and I told her, you know, look, I'm ready to, um, tell you about my dream now, and then I told her, you know, um, there was this woman that her face was covered and she was crying, like hysterically crying. And I would never see her face, but the certain person that I told her about, um, the, uh, my father or brother in my dream, um, with, you know, we would play or whatever, but my dreams were starting to end with somebody dragging me away from him and him stuck in cement. And then, you know, I told her, you know, I was like, I don't really look like you guys. It's, you know, are you guys my little parents? And she was just like, well, who told you that? Did we not make you feel like you were loved enough? And they did at that time, you know, um, and everything was good. But then the dreams started getting worse and, you know, I was trying to understand, you know, why my mom kept saying, you know, she knows things that there's no way that she should know. And I would never not understand what she was saying to me because my dreams to me at that time did not make any sense. Until I started getting older and I was just like, are you guys sure I'm not adopted? 
um, because there was a conversation I had back in like 81 or 82 where we were in Germany with, uh, with this guy, you know, and um, he was an uncle, a family friend at the time that I knew of, you know, I never heard of him before, you know, um, um, my mom was just like, well, well, you haven't seen him since you were younger, you know, and he was like a, a, a family friend of ours, and he really wanted to talk to you, and then, you know, we talked or whatever, but when I talked to him, his voice, it was just so familiar to me, like, I don't remember your face, I can't place your face, but your voice, it sounds so familiar to me, and then, um, kept on telling me how nervous he was when he talked to me or whatever. And I told him, relax, you know, just go ahead and relax. And it's just his voice was just so familiar to me. And he was just like, well, you do remember. But I haven't seen you since you were a little girl. But, you know, I have a little girl your age. And, you know, and it, it just, the, the conversation got intense. And um, it was just really crazy. You know, he asked me, you know, normal things. But it was just. He never knew, um, not actually him never knew, I never knew the reason why he acted the way he acted, because he acted like a family friend, you know, conversations, the way it went on, it was just emotional, um, you know, you wouldn't have with a family friend of a child, you know, a father would do that, and, you know, the dreams progressively got worse, um, until... I was like eight or nine, and I asked him, you know, hey, am I adopted, you know, because, I mean, I'm struggling in school, they tried to label me as a, having a learning disability, and I really did, and I just didn't understand the things that, you know, uh, were explained to me, it's not like I felt like I was uh, stupid or anything, or had a learning disability, um, or special needs, or anything like that, you know, I'm trying to say anybody's stupid or anything like that, but, you know, as kids at that ch time, you're trying to figure out anything. It's like, God, am I stupid? Or, you know, or whatever. I just didn't understand it. I just didn't know. And, um, you know, since this situation has been going on right now, um, it made me look back at all the things I went through in life. And, you know, then it started putting perspective of, okay, now I understand why I went through what I went through. Um, it was just you know, really weird, you know, I, I just had trouble paying attention in school, you know, my parents were like, what's wrong, and I said, I just can't get it, you know, I just don't understand it, you know, I, it's just frustrating to me, I just always constantly got frustrated, and, you know, I, I you know, after a while, our parent, my parents got a divorce, you know, it was becoming too much for my dad, he was just like constantly telling me, you know, the things that you're saying, you're thinking, they're going to think you're crazy, they're going to put you in an institution, you know, because the things you're saying are not right, and I'm just like, oh, but they're true though, why, why can I not say it, why do I have to feel like I have to, you know, be censored on, you know, as long as I'm not disrespectful, I should be able to tell you how I feel without it being any kind of, you know, uh, uh, punishment behind that, you know, um, and I just didn't know why, but, you know, looking at all the things I was going through, I was just, you know, I ran away from home a lot, you know, I didn't like staying at home, um, I always liked to be one with nature, um, I always wanted to go out and help people, but it was just all the things that were going on. I guess it was just, you know, my family weren't being honest with me, and it was just, uh, I've been placed in anger management um, in and out of institutions because they said um, I was bipolar or schizophrenic or I was crazy, but it was just the things I was telling them, they knew it was true. So it was like I was being programmed to not think about the things that were actually benefiting me and the planet. You know, why would anybody want to hinder anybody like that? You know, if you, you know, if you can go ahead and leave the comments down there, you know, just let me know how, you know, your experience was when you found out or if you're still trying to search and figure out what's, what, what to look for, I'm still searching myself, I'm just new to this experience, you know, and loving the fact that I have answers and knowing where I came from, you know, um, 
uh, it's just um, going through stuff and trying to question and understand, you know, your true self. Like, why am I here? What am I on earth to do? You know, it's not just sit up here and do a nine to five job and do the same thing like a robot every single day. You know, and searching back and forth, you know, and trying to understand myself. Um, and knowing, you know, since my father had passed away, it, it's just things that got really crazy, you know. Um, my family still hasn't, you know, came clear about anything. Um, so I'm just waiting. Right now I've been to different uh, adoption agencies and, you know, trying to, you know, deal with that and trying to go through my life on a daily basis. It just seems like, you know, with the more I... I hear about and I do research about the indigos go through a lot of bad luck, like gut wrenching things. Like, I mean, it's just like things that I've gone through. Um, you know, other people have told me, like, how you have not tried to commit suicide or anything, but obviously it was meant for me to stay here because it was like I've contemplated it so many times. I even tried one accidentally, you know, I accidentally overdosed um one time and um then my children had to bring me back it was all over it was like a serious pain that i was having it's just like the pain wouldn't go away and i wasn't doing it on purpose but i just wanted the pain to go away and you know my kids with their good thinking they were able to bring me back you know so i was just constantly going through stuff like you know what is my life purpose you know what am i here to do you know i just you know, I just don't want to sit here and be a nobody. I want to be able to help something, help something or someone, you know, actually contribute to the world. And, um, I mean, going through different research and searching, you know, trying to find out who I am and, um, you know, just going through all these things and trying to find out who I am. You know, it's getting kind of frustrating, but it's just like, I'm glad I started doing the researches. Uh, things that you look for, you know, you don't feel like you fit in anywhere. You know, um, I never fit in with anybody. It just felt like, even though if I was with my friends, it's like now, if I was to go out, I feel so out of place. I sit there like like a little quiet mouse, you know, even though I'm having a good time, I just don't feel like it's right, like I'm in, I'm, I'm having a good time, but yet I want to be at home in my little four walls in this little room, you know, I just have like candles and all positive things around me, you know, I feel more comfortable that way, you know, unless I have somebody that's, you know, you know, on the same level as me, I just didn't really understand it, like why? And then just to understand that, you know, doing the research, reading up on different things, you know, then I was just like, wow, you know, I'm not the only one who goes through this, you know, I'm, you know, I like to have long, deep conversations with people that have meaning to try to change the world. What can we do? You know, we, you know, I've always uh, went through things where as being, you know, the listener or the reliable one, I always got treated so bad. And when I finally needed people, they weren't there. But, you know, every, you know, when you lose things, you know, we always say, oh, I lost this, or I lost that. But losing things is not always a loss. You know, maybe that's like a blessing in disguise, you know. I hate being by myself, but, you know, I'd rather be by myself than be around somebody that's not there for me the way they're supposed to be. So, I, you know, I just keep continuing to do the research and, um, you know, figure out, you know, they're always trying to label, you know, uh, people that, um, they say that has ADHD or supposed to be bipolar or schizophrenic, and they try to label me as that, and I, I mean, I don't, you know, we have our moments like any other person, but then it's just more enhanced, because I always just wonder why my head constantly hurt, you know, why was I feeling all these different thoughts and emotions when I'm, like, I'm sitting here and I'm okay, but next thing I'll be happy and I'm sad and I'm frustrated all at the same time and did not know where this was coming from, wondering, wow, am I going crazy? But just to know that I can go out and reach out and see that there are other people like me and then just know, you know, it's okay to be different. 
you know, it's okay to not want to fit in, you know, so I'm glad about that, so, um, I'm going to probably do some more videos, and, um, hopefully things will progress a little bit more with me finding out more about myself and being, um, more in tune to have more info about me being, um, at Indigo. So, everybody have a good night, and...